Welcome to this video on reselling a Dell XPS 13 9343 laptop. This is my own personal XPS 9343. It's getting on a bit now, but still works fine. Unfortunately though, the battery is lasting approximately only two hours, and that's in energy saving mode. So the time has come to replace the battery. To do that, we have been playing eBay Roulette. This is the second battery that I've had for this machine. The first one did not turn up in a box, it turned up in a plastic bag. Most of the clips were damaged, and it wasn't the rating that I ordered. So that went back with, along with some negative feedback. This one is looking to be a better option. So let's have an unbox and have a look. This is not an original Dell OEM battery. Those are incredibly hard to get hold of but it should be, at least according to the seller, compatible battery. So we have a 4-cell 52 watt-hour battery. Part number is JD25G, and this is a 7.4 volt, 6930 milliamp hour battery, which is a direct like-for-like -like replacement with the original battery. Looks like we also get some instructions is certainly more than the previous one did. English, Japanese, German, French and Spanish. But I think we will forego that pleasure. So in order to get into a Dell XPS 13 of this generation you will need some sort of shim, a Phillips head PH0, or a fairly small Phillips head screwdriver anyway, and a T5 screwdriver. First thing you will notice is that my foot is missing. This came off uh, a year or so ago and so far I have not been able to find anything that will properly reattach the rubber to the aluminium plate, or at least won't attach it for more than a couple of days. So if you have any ideas, do let me know in the comments. I'm going to start by removing the screw hidden under the serial number flap. This is the only Phillips head screw on the chassis, although there are some more inside. There are eight of these T5 screws. It's a fairly simple process to get them out. Just make sure you don't lose any. Once you have them out, you may or may not need the shim. I've had this machine apart several times to dust it out or change components, and as a result, it is somewhat easier to get into than it was the first time around. Your mileage may vary on that, and you may find the shim is helpful. If you don't have something metal like I do, then a plastic guitar pick is perfectly fine. To get into the chassis, I find starting by one of the USB ports is easiest. If you get your shim or your nail in, work your way around to the front, applying a little bit of upward pressure. The back part of the case should more or less come straight off. It comes away in one piece and there are no wires to worry about attached to the back plate. So this is the original Dell battery that came with the machine when it was new. It's done a good job, but it has decayed, particularly after a prolonged period of me using it docked on my desk. If you're not familiar with buying replacement batteries, the best advice that I can offer you is to take the back off of a machine like this, take a photograph of the regulatory and information sticker, and then attempt to do a like-for-like -like match with your options on eBay. If you can do it by part number, for example JD25G, that's fine, but be aware that for this particular machine there are at least three official part numbers with slightly different specifications, all of which will be applicable to this machine. But if you can find a direct match, obviously do so. The most important figure is the voltage. This is 7.4 volts, as was the original. You can have 
a very small variance in that. I wouldn't go for much more than 0.2, but if you're unsure, find an exact match on the voltage. Watt hour is a computed value based upon the voltage and the milliamp hour of the battery, so that may be lower or higher, as may be the milliamp hour or amperage value of the battery. This is a 6.93 amp hour or 6930 milliamp hour battery. This value does not have to exactly match your previous battery. If the voltage is the same, 7.4 volts in this case, and the milliamp hour is higher, it will work fine and it will last longer. If the voltage is the same and the milliamp hour value is lower, then the battery won't last as long as the original. I will say, again, the best thing to do is get a like-for-like -like match of exactly what you have if you're unsure. But also when it comes to eBay and Amazon, be dubious about claims of offering significantly higher milliamp hour values compared to your existing battery. Unless this new battery is thicker, heavier, or in some other way larger, it is highly unlikely that it is going to be a more powerful battery. You're probably wasting your money. So let's get the original battery out. To do this there are four screws. Three of these very broad flathead, very short M2 screws and a single slightly longer M1 screw. It doesn't matter which order you take them out in. Just be aware that when the battery comes loose you need to be careful of these small wires so that you don't wind up accidentally damaging one of these cables. The keen-eyed amongst you will have noticed that these wires are in fact taped to the battery. So let's take these out. This is a speaker wire. And so is this one here on the side. This eyelet is captive. So lift and slide the battery slightly to the side, being very careful not to put any pressure on the speaker wire because this is very flimsy and very easy to damage. Once the battery is free, just gently wiggle the connector out from the case and free the old battery. Putting the battery back in again is an exact reverse of the process. However, you may like to use the opportunity, as I have previously done, Give the fan a clean out, a gentle dust off using an appropriate anti-static cloth or some alcohol and in addition I have found it useful in the past just to go through with your screwdriver and gently hand tighten any screw head that you see in the case. These were tightened fairly recently within a year however the first time I actually took the machine apart I found that many of them had started to come loose. So giving them a gentle hand only tighten is a good idea. Do not use a drill, do not use any leverage on the screwdriver, just a gentle hand tighten. We'll slide the battery back in now, so the hook here on the left goes over the standoff. battery slides into place next to the speakers and make sure that the contacts slip properly into place around the M2 screw head. This is a little tighter than the original battery but has gone in quite well. I'll start by replacing the single M1 just to give it a little resistance and now I will connect the battery. The speaker wire was over the wire. Don't trap it beneath it. And that connects quite nicely. There. You can now put the speaker wire back. And finish off by returning the M2 screws.
restore the top plate nice and flush straight down on top and you should feel it clip back into place along the edges I tend to start with the central screw just to hold everything into place again do not feel tempted to use a drill or any leverage on the screwdriver nice and tight by hand and then you can proceed to restore the eight M5 screws. if this battery has any charge in it. Ideally what you want is your seller or the manufacturer to have charged it to 50% ahead of it being put into long-term storage. The previous battery that I had from eBay had absolutely no charge in it at all. Let's see if this has anything in it. It does. So I'm going to push F2 to get into the BIOS and I'm going to come down to battery information. So we have 79%, the BIOS is recognising the battery, it's currently discharging. Excellent health and it's recognised that the AC adapter is not connected. So it looks like we have a successful battery replacement. Now there may be some calibration problems initially because the system and its power management calibration is used to the now defunct old battery. I was getting around two hours of usable battery life in power saving mode from the old battery. So hopefully after it's had a little opportunity to adjust to the new battery, we should see power management offer us something higher than two hours. So we've come up with 78% one hour 50 eight minutes remaining on the battery on the balance power profile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it on the balance power profile and we will find some sort of YouTube video to play just to let the operating system bed in the battery. Here we are back again after 10 or 15 minutes and according to Ubuntu, we are at 72% remaining with an time estimate of 7 hours and 24 minutes so superficially at least a significant improvement over the old battery which I always had to run in power saving mode in order to get around 2 hours out of so there we have it at around £30 replacing the battery in your laptop is a fairly economic option and is something within the realm of capability for most users as long as you take your time and do it carefully there isn't a lot to go wrong but obviously, if you're in any doubt, find a qualified technician who I'm sure will be happy to help you. As always, if you're interested in any of the parts that we used in this video, you can find their links in the description. And, as mentioned earlier, if anybody has any bright ideas about how I can replace the missing foot, please also let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and happy computing.